coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Highlights from the sixth week of Arkansas's high school season. Hooten's Arkansas Football next. Now, Arkansas's most watched sports show, Hooten's Arkansas Football. Good Saturday morning. Welcome to the Marketplace Grill and Hooten's Arkansas Football. We've got highlights from the sixth week of Arkansas's high school season coming up in the next 30 minutes. Plus, we'll be telling you about some great menu items at Marketplace. They've got locations across the state. It's a great place to eat Saturday lunch. I'll plant that seed now, and we'll talk about some of their menu items coming up in just a little bit. But the playoff races are heating up. We've got highlights from all across the state. And our big school highlights are brought to you by Big Red Stores. We begin in Bryant. Hootens.com game of the week with the Hornets in blue taking on Russellville. Bryant quarterback Logan Parker has got 12 <laughs> touchdown passes on the year. Taylor Masters is going to make it 13 with the 32-yard sprint after the screen. Bryant 7, Russellville nothing. Russellville retaliates with Blake Humphrey. Nathan Cathcart with the catch, but Bryant's defense would answer. In fact, both teams playing great defense this year. Russellville's Landon Lloyd and Trent Leslie force the Bryant punt. Looks like he's going to be blocked, but check out junior punter Austin Humbert. Rumbling for the Bryant first down before Russellville Steven Gephardt makes the stop. In the second quarter, Russellville's Terrell Carter muscles the interception away and that sets up the Cyclones. Russellville couldn't run it, just three yards rushing all night, so they went to the air and Humphrey completed 22 passes for 228 yards, including this strike to Josh Cloud, 31-yard touchdown, 11 seconds before halftime. It was tied at seven at the break, but Bryant's offense would total 265 yards on the night, and with three seconds left, Austin Bradley kicked a 33-yard field goal to win it. Final score, Bryant 10, Russellville 7. At North Little Rock, the Charger Wildcats trying to score on Cabot just before halftime. Quarterback David Holt throws deep to Brian Browse at the seven-yard line. Time running out in the half. Next play, Holt to the corner of the end zone. Deshaun Thomas pulls it down. North Little Rock touchdown, right? Wrong. The refs said time expired before the snap. Cabot heads to the locker room in a hurry before the refs change their mind. It's Cabot 21, North Little Rock 7 at the break. North Little Rock comes out mad in the third. Their first play, running the inside reverse, speedy senior Jonathan Dyer. North Little Rock will get in the end zone shortly. Big Marcus Fields twisting and churning through the pile. That cuts Cabot's lead to a touchdown. A little later, North Little Rock running it on the right side again. Ramon Stewart's going to get a great block from Zach Stather. He's North Little Rock's big recruit, and he frees Stewart for a touchdown. Now it's 21-20, to but North Little Rock botches the extra point, and that would allow Cabot to escape with a one-point win. Final score, Cabot 21, North Little Rock 20. From North Little Rock to Van Buren now, the Pointers playing host to Fort Smith Northside and down by just four in the third quarter, but Northside is looking for more. Junior quarterback Dax Dupree hits Anthony Johnson for a Northside first down. Johnson finished with 10 catches for 132 yards on the night and a little later in the drive. Northside trying to get in the red zone, but Van Buren's stack three defense holds firm. Miles Morrison and Aaron Green combining for the tackle here. On the next play, it's more Van Buren D. Kale Schoolcraft sniffs out the end around. That forces Northside into third and long, so the Grizzlies go back to the air. Dupree, he completed 15 of 20 passes for 193 yards on the night, connecting with Johnson for another Northside first down. Three plays later, Donald Goodman scores from two yards out as Northside keeps its playoff hopes alive. Final score, Fort Smith Northside 24, Van Buren 6. From Van Buren across the Arkansas River to Fort Smith Southside. It's homecoming and the defending champs are locked up with visiting Fayetteville. 14-14 in the fourth quarter. Great ball game here and here comes Fayetteville. Senior quarterback Blake McDonald going to work. Looking for Kellen Summers and he's got it. Summers on the run before Southside's Tony Thompson collars him. More Fayetteville now. Same duo McDonald to Summers and he's on the move. Southside's Ryan Ashcraft and Evan Myers finally bring him down. It was a big night for McDonald. He completed 15 of 27 passes for 242 yards and here comes his third touchdown. Michael Bowman on the receiving end. That put Fayetteville up 21 to 14. 
Southside tries to respond. Senior quarterback Clay Borengaster on the slant to sophomore Taylor Hudson. The Rebels on the move now. But a little later on fourth and long, Borengaster to Damon Lawson. There's Fayetteville's Colin Sanders with the smackdown, and that secures Fayetteville's big road win. It's the Purple Dogs' fifth straight victory over Southside. They take a giant step toward the playoffs. Final score, Fayetteville 21, Fort Smith Southside 14. There's a new number one in Hootens.com Class 7A rankings. Hello, Bryant. The Hornets have arrived for the first time since 1999. Ranked number one by Hootens Arkansas football. Springdale Harbor got a big win, too. They knocked off Bentonville on their home field, which was likely for the 7A West Championship. Bentonville drops to number three. Good chance Bentonville will play at Bryant in the semifinals. There are no other changes in the top 10. There's Fayetteville and Russellville. Little Rock Central 6, then it's Southside, Northside, Cabot, and Rogers, which beat Springdale. The Bulldogs are 0-3 in conference play. They're followed by Catholic, Conway, North Little Rock, and Pine Bluff. In Class 6A, Lake Hamilton undefeated, ranked number three by Hootens.com. That's a big reason why. Philip Butterfield, 33-yard touchdown pass to Josh Prophet. Lake Hamilton up early on Little Rock Hall. Butterfield passed for 179 yards of the night, all in the first half. He finds Rob Curry out of the backfield for 21 more, and that sets up David Church who gets in for another Lake Hamilton touchdown. The Wolves' offense was rolling, and their defense held Hall to just 10 yards in the first half. Final score, Lake Hamilton 41, Hall 0. At Jacksonville, the Red Devils playing host to Sylvan Hills, and Patrick Gaines pounded it all night long for Jacksonville. He was their top rusher. Sylvan Hills answered with Lawrence Hodges. He carried 18 times for 97 yards, and Sylvan Hills quarterback Hunter Miller helped him out. He thinks about passing, but he's got open spaces to the right. Miller had 79 yards and two touchdowns. He also passed for another one as Sylvan Hills gets its second win of the season. Final score, Bears 35, Jacksonville 13. We are WC! The Watson Chapel Wildcats in the capital Sydney Friday night to take on Parkview. The Patriots wearing the blue and down by one in the second quarter, but on the move, Parkview's freshman sensation Jalen Watkins zipping into Chapel territory before Chapel's George Haney finally wraps him up. A couple of plays later, it's Parkview's a junior fullback, Dominique Lucas, sprinting up the middle, untouched. Parkview up 14 to 8. And Watkins helps Parkview pull off the upset. He scored three touchdowns of the night, and Parkview gets its first conference victory in two years. Final score, Parkview 26, Watson Chapel 22. Here's Hoops.com Class 6A rankings. Texarkana's been on top since the magazine hit newsstands back on July the 4th. The Razorbacks won't be challenged until week nine at number three, Lake Hamilton. Number two, West Memphis will travel to Forest City the final week of the regular season. Eldorado jumps back in the top five after an impressive win over Sheridan. Marion's number seven, and Sylvan Hills moves up a notch after back-to-back -back wins. Mountain Home starts a second ten, followed by the Parkview Patriots, who won their first conference game in two years. Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. We begin our Class 5A highlights in Bologna. The Eagles wearing the red and riding a three-game losing streak with a tough draw. Number one Greenwood in town with quarterback Tyler Wilson. Some think he's the best in the state. He's committed to Tulsa, and that's Josh Hagan taking a screen pass right into your living room. Look out over there on the sideline, cameraman. A little bit later, Wilson hooks up with C.J. McCraney, and he's going to run right over us again, but this time it's a 25-yard touchdown for Greenwood. Wilson and pass for 472 yards on the night, but this one is tipped. Bologna's Jordan Jernigan intercepts, and here's a nice play for Bologna. Kevin Puckett with the tight toss to Mason Kinsbatter. 31-yard touchdown. That tied it up at 14, but the second half belonged to top-ranked Greenwood. Final score, Bulldogs 52, Bologna 28. The number four ranked Batesville Pioneers at North Pulaski, and that's Batesville's Tim Hughes getting into the end zone. He had 150 yards on the night. North Pulaski not happy with it on the sideline, and they want to get something going. And here comes a Falcon highlight for you. A.J. Allen going deep. He finds Gerald Blair, who stays in bounds, gets past Brandon Owens, and he's gone 55 yards. That's one of North Pulaski's top plays of the year, but Batesville dominated the night. Final score, Batesville 48. North Pulaski, 19. 
from North Kalaski to Southwest Little Rock, Mills playing host to rival McClellan for the coveted Marshmallow Bowl trophy. Mills is moving early thanks to senior running back Antonio Smith taking the pitch from Ben Trail Cobbs at the last second, and Smith finds daylight before McClellan's Terrence Ingram makes the tackle. Smith missed the past two games with an injury, but you couldn't tell it Friday night. He takes another pitch from Cobbs and motors down the sideline before McClellan's Joseph Smith and Isaiah Mason wrestle him down. Smith racked up 167 yards, but a couple of plays later, it's 210-pound fullback Tim Stegall plowing in to put Mills up 7-0 in the Comets' roll. Final score, Marshmallow Bowl champion Mills 40, McClellan 19. Here's Hoops.com Class 5A rankings after six weeks of the season, and the top ten stays the same. Greenwood has been ranked number one since Hoops Arkansas football hit the newsstands on July the 4th. Camden Fairview beat Magnolia by 41 on Friday night. Should have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Then it's Batesville and Little Rock Christian jumping up to number four after beating Harrison by 11. PA's five next week, Blyville and BB hook up in BB. Number eight, Siloam Springs on the road at Little Rock Christian next week. There's Harrison dropping to nine, and Monticello checks into the top ten for the first time this season. Magnolia's 11, followed by Bologna, Robinson, and West Helena, which all lost on Friday. Hot Springs is number 16, followed by Lakeside, Hope, Nettleton, and the Alma Airedales at number 20. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by Twin City Bank. We begin our Class 4A coverage with the game of the week, CAC at Nashville. Nashville wearing the black and down by a touchdown, but quarterback Pierre Vaughn is loose in the red zone. Here comes Nashville. That sets up Deshaun Scoggins for the short touchdown, and it's tied. Nashville 14, CAC 14 in the second quarter, but CAC was on a mission trip Friday night. Drew Stringfellow heads off to 210-pound Jasper Lee, and Lee plows ahead before Nashville Ricky Winones brings him down. CAC would overcome five turnovers and pull away in the fourth quarter to break Nashville's 33-game winning streak. Final score, CAC 38, Nashville 28. At Arkansas Baptist, the Eagles wearing their red and playing host to the Queen. The Leopards led by 15 at halftime, but here comes Baptist with senior running back Richard Cox. He's got the direct snap and a nice gain. He totaled 44 yards on the night, and Baptist keeps the drive alive with senior quarterback Logan Quinn hitting Greg Bowie with a quick pass. The Queen's Grant Dooley and Zach Taylor converge, and the Queen's defense would stiffen. They force a Baptist punt. The rush is on, and the Queen's Juan Aguilar blocks it. Riley Branson's going to recover, and the Queen is in business in the Baptist red zone. Next play, the Queen's sophomore running back Greg White slices into the end zone. That made the Queen's lead 28-6. White racked up 118 yards and three touchdowns. Final score, the Queen 42, Arkansas Baptist 12. Here's Hootons.com Class 4A rankings after six weeks of play. Undefeated Warren stays on top after escaping Dumas 26-20 on Friday. Newport moves up to number two, and CAC jumps to number three with their win over Nashville. Number five, Stuttgart will play host to Newport next week for the 2-4A title. Dumas is six, and number seven, Farmington, travels to grab it next week. Then it's Boonville and Ozark. Dollarway's number 10. The Cardinals beat Fordyce by 19 on Friday. Hoops.com predicts the Cardinals are going to win their final four of the regular season. Highland starts the second 10, followed by Pocahontas, Perry Grove, Osceola, and Lone Oak is number 15. The Jackrabbits are averaging 35 points per game. Hamburg checks in at number 16, followed by the Valley View Blazers, Sand Lizards, Clarksville, and Truman. We begin our Class 3A highlights with top-ranked Shiloh Christian taking on Mountainburg. First place in the 1AAA on the line. Shiloh jumped to an early 14-0 lead, so Mountainburg going for broke on fourth down. But look at Shiloh's freshman Sam Harville flying in to make the tackle. That gives the Saints the ball deep in Mountainburg's end. And on the next play, Shiloh senior quarterback Blake Roberts doing it on the ground. He ran for 101 yards on the night, including this 20-yard scamper. Shiloh moving the ball on the ground. This time, it's sophomore Chris Bryant picking up a first down. Bryant had 86 yards on just five carries for Shiloh, but Mountainburg's not giving up. Here's some good defense. Michael Thomas 
and Leon Marion swarming Shiloh's Mitchell Roberts in the red zone there. But on the next play, it's Mitchell's big brother, Blake Roberts plowing into the end zone as Shiloh cruises to another win and sole possession of first place in the one AAA. Final score, number one Shiloh Christian, 41, Mountainburg, six. At Episcopal, the Wildcats playing host of number four ranked Boxite. Boxite wearing the white and already up by 14, running the beer with precision. Aaron Matheson making the nice read and nobody's there. 20 yard touchdown. Boxite's got a three touchdown lead in the first half. A little bit later, it's Aaron Matheson again, this time through the air to Austin Hicks. He's inside the five and write this down. Tommy Wimberly pulls in for another box side score. The Miners are rolling. Episcopal had its moments. Edmund Jackowitz makes two, three. Box side Miners miss him before Aaron Mathis makes the sure tackle and the Miners go on to win big. Final score, box side 42, Episcopal seven. Here's Hoots.com Class 3A rankings after six weeks of play. Just one change in the top five. Marshall moves up eight spots after dominating Harding Academy on its home field, 52 to 15. This is Marshall's highest ranking in Hoots' 15-year history. Atkins stays at number six, holding off Pottsville, 28 to 21. Atkins plays at Charleston in three weeks to decide the conference championship. Corning, Gurdon, Prescott, and Harding Academy round out the top 10. And number 11, Hoxie is undefeated with the showdown next week against Corning. Mayflower was without two suspended stars and barely won at Cave City. There's Perryville, Lafayette County, Harrisburg, Green Forest, and Mountain Berg. Number 18, Lamar, held off Paris, and number 19, Lavaca, hammered Hector 64 to nothing. No matter which come before you or what will come after you, you are the Middle Springs Warriors. There's a tremendous amount of tradition inside those green uniforms. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'd rather have a great tradition and great athletes any day, any day. Because it's going to be a war. In Class 2A, the Mineral Springs Hornets play host of Spring Hill in the 7AA West. Spring Hill in the white and on the move early. Quarterback Kobe Powell slips the football to Brandon Oldis. He's Spring Hill's top rusher and he sprints all the way down to the two before Jerry White makes the tackle for Mineral Springs. And on the next play, Spring Hill's gonna score. Corey Powell follows Otis into the end zone. Spring Hill leads six to nothing. On the ensuing kickoff, Mineral Springs tries to strike back. Sean Richardson with a nice kick return. This one went back and forth all night, but Spring Hill beats Mineral Springs for the third time in four years. Final score, Spring Hill 35, Mineral Springs 26. At Mount Ida, the number three ranked Lions playing host to number four Murfreesboro, the Hoops.com Class 2A game of the week, and Mount Ida in control in the fourth quarter. Sophomore Devin Weston picking up a first down for the Lions. A few plays later, senior Josh Baker bolts into the end zone. That's Baker's third touchdown of the night for Mount Ida, but Murfreesboro tries to rally. Rattler quarterback Mark McCray finds Zach Bufkin. He caught seven passes for Murfreesboro, 169 yards on the night. But two plays later, McGray throws deep, and Mount Ida's Troy Thu intercepts it. That was Murfreesboro's fifth turnover of the night at Mount Ida, and the Lions are now on top of the 7AA West. Final score, Mount Ida 33, Murfreesboro 14. It's a big step in achieving your goals. And you seniors, you know you haven't got a goal set. The first off conference championship and then the other things. We're gonna worry about the conference championship first. Our defensive line, stepped up and plugged the holes and our second team just held the passes. We played really hard defense, tough defense. Our offense, we kind of slacked up a little bit, boy, but we took it to the house. We, we did good, we all blocked, we all, we all did great. Now the Hootons.com 2A Top 20. Junction City stays on top and Bearden's number two after hammering Hampton 58 to nothing. Bearden held Hampton to 32 yards. In fact, Bearden's first team defense has not allowed a point this year. Mount Ida's win over Murfreesboro likely secured that 7AA West title. Carlisle jumps up to number five after beating Hazen by a touchdown. They're strong at number six, followed by Hazen and Earl, which dumped Desart by a dozen, 34 to 22 in a key Double A game. Bigelow handed defending state champion Jesse Bill its sixth straight loss. The Derricks Outlaws are undefeated, make their top 10 debut. 
Jesseville starts the second 10 and Desert 12. Desert travels to Carlisle next week and, and the Hoopers.com TV crew will be there. Danville, Mark Tree, and Woodlawn won on Friday night. The rest of the top 20 looks like this. Clarendon, Mountain Pine, Cross County, Spring Hill, and the Hackett Hornets. For our State Farm Play of the Week, we go back to Arkansas Baptist, where the Queens sophomore running back, Greg White, rushed for 118 yards and three touchdowns, including this sweet 74-yard sprint. That's our State Farm Play of the Week. Coming up in December, we'll be naming a State Farm Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year, as well as a Coach of the Year. That's at the prestigious State Farm Awards, presented by Hooten's